Hey, are you picking again? Wait, wait, wait. In your world, this dash is still not installed, so don't pick. One thing at a time. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to another episode. I don't know what number of our series about this uh, 1970 TR6 that we're restoring in the Rusty Beauty's garage. And as you already saw in this episode, we're gonna install the dash. In the last episode, we installed the tail lights. We run the wiring and all that. We made sure that everything works in the back and that was in preparation to mount the dash finally because we wanted to make sure that everything works electrically before we mount the gauges permanently. So without further ado, let's get crack locking Okay, I filmed a 10 minutes clip probably before I realized that my microphone was off. <laughs> so instead of trying to do a voiceover after for hours, I'm gonna just reshoot it. The thing is, I've already installed these uh, switches here. So that's the only thing that I'm not gonna show you how I've done it. So this is the dash that came originally with the car, I believe. John took care of it, sanded it and uh, polished it and I don't know what else. It looks great and uh, like I said, I already installed this. Actually, that was the real stat uh, that we tested, but the, on the other dash that we have on the table that we stole the gauges from, there was this real stat, so we pulled this one out and that's it. I already installed this switch that costs an arm and a leg here. This plate was there. So this is where the wiper and the windshield washer fluid switches go. So the plate was installed in advance. And this little tab is here. The only thing I'll show you on the other dash, the hinges for the glove box uh, lid have a screw here in the back. I never use that screw for the simple reason that when the dash is mounted, if for whatever reason, you wanna take the door off. Well, you can take it from these screws on this side, but you can't take the hinges off because you don't have access here to the back. So I think I'm gonna save myself and John eventually troubles by not installing these screws. Okay, so we are ready for the gauges now. So these are our gauges that we're gonna install. The speedometer is still on the car, but it doesn't get installed in advance. Only these four can be installed now with their brackets and everything. These get installed after when the dash is already mounted on the metal dash. I, I brought this one here for the only reason that I was missing the gaskets. So John said that uh, somewhere in the boxes there was a bag with all the gaskets that go on the gauges right here, but I couldn't find it. And now I don't wanna get stuck again with this dash. I wanna finally install it but without the gaskets we can't so i had to figure out something else i don't want to order gaskets now and wait for another week or so so what i figured out here for the big one guess what this is this is oil filter seal it works perfectly here <laughs> it's a little bit tighter but that's perfect I have to stretch it a little bit and it works great just need to make sure that it is not twisted like this. So this actually works like a charm. So that's what we're gonna use for the big ones. And for the small ones, I have a set of O-rings out of Amazon. We have big enough sizes here for this, but I actually chose to use this size because when it's stretched a little bit like that it becomes perfect size to fit inside the groove here like that because the, the o-ring is pretty thick but when you stretch it a little bit and it becomes the exact size that we need and it gets jammed inside even you see it doesn't come out. Okay, 
perfect. And that's the correct order, I believe. I've seen them in all kinds of configurations, but I'm pretty sure this is the correct one. Temperature, oil, fuel, and voltmeter or ammeter. That's it. Let me see where the two lenses for here are. We need those as well. Okay, here they are. Initially, I told that one needs to be green because I told that the signal was there, but actually the signal is, well, not on the tachometer, but on the speedometer, there's a green light for the signal. Here we have the ignition light and the other one is for the hazards. So they're both red, which is okay. So how do we put them? Horizontal or top and bottom? Do they also need... I think they also need an O-ring. Well, it happens that I have all sizes. I'm not sure they need O-ring, but it's actually better if that's also gonna act as a lock washer because you know these come loose sometimes because we're gonna have this in the back but this is gonna add a little bit of springiness and it's not gonna allow it to get loose okay. all right so that's how far we need to go on the bench now we can start putting it on the car actually before we install everything i just realized that i never tested the voltage stabilizer so let's test that because we're gonna lose access to it later, you know? So the voltage stabilizer takes 12 volts or 13 volts or even 14 volts sometimes from the battery depending on the charge of the battery and how much the alternator is currently charging. But it takes that and turns it into uh, 10 volts. The new electronic voltage stabilizers do that electronically so they have permanent 10 volts their output. These ones, the old ones though, how they do it is they have a metal strip inside that constantly opens and closes. So it either gives you full 12 volt, 13 volt, 14 volt or whatever the in is, or it disconnects it. So it's on and off all the time. But the average between the time it is at full voltage and the time it is at zero voltage gives you 10 volts. If you try to measure that with electronic multimeter like this one, for example, I have 12 volts in here, like you see. Come on now. So a little bit over 12 volts. And on the output of here, it constantly varies. It goes six, seven, eight, nine. You can't figure it out because it changes super fast. So to be able to do that, I keep a analog multimeter, like the old style, senses the voltage a little bit slower and the needle still varies, goes up and down, but it is not that much. Problem is I have 10 DC and 250 DC, so it's gonna go to the maximum now, I guess, at 10, yeah. So that's the input, but let's see the output. You see what the needle does? It goes up and down, up and down. So it still varies. It's between 6 and 12 volts. So the average should be 10. Okay, so even with the analog, we don't have perfectly accurate reading, but at least we can see that it goes on and off all the time. So we're good. So that looks a little bit better. All the wire mess here is gone. We only have these wires here. So this is everything that goes to the switch for the blower and the ground for the blower. I don't know where this needs to be hooked up. We'll see where we can hook it up to ground. And this is for the amplifier, like we said. And here the switch for the windshield wipers needs to be installed still but I don't have the motors, so I'm not sure how they go on the switch. Anyway, the dash looks great though. I mean, it's perfect. 
even here where I was worried about the dust pad you remember how it was the vinyl was floating in one area and it didn't look great so it's hidden it was here and I was worried that the wooden dust will not hide it but it actually hides it pretty well well you know that feeling when things start looking nice and you get motivated to do more and more well that's how I feel now so let's install the crash pads as well so how they go they have these studs that go into these holes here this vinyl here gets wrapped around the dash around the metal dash and there's this strip of metal that sticks here it goes above the metal dash and gets wrapped around it too the first thing that you need to do there otherwise it's not gonna work well come on Well, in this case, let's see if we can install the plinth as well. Now, before we put it on, there's this nut here. So we have to run a bolt through the dash here underneath. And that's because what happens is when you pull the choke cable many times, we're gonna change all these, don't worry. We have new ones. Um, when you pull the choke really hard, you pull the whole plinth and you rip these two little screws that go here. So that's why they added this. On TR4 there's no such thing, I think. But for TR6 they added it here, so you can run a bolt through the metal dash to here to hold the plinth in place. Anyway. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Look at that! We have an almost complete dash. Let me go find the screws for here and the bolt to run there. Should we put the door? Eh, no, we don't want the door yet. It's gonna be in our way. Okay, the screws are installed and this is where this extra bolt goes. Right here. To hold the plinth in place. So, what's left is... <laughs> Let's test if everything still works. <laughs> I turned off half of the lights in the garage, so it's a little bit darker. Oh, why? Why is this white? Really? It looks like we're gonna have to find another voltmeter. That's too bad. Okay, this, this is working, that's good. Let's turn the ignition on. Okay. Now this one is working, which is good. We have oil pressure. Why is this light not on? I don't know. I'm gonna figure this out later. Let's see the signals. Hmm, there you go. This one works. Works for the right as well. The high beam. Well. Wow. It works, but it is so dim, we have to figure out something else here. Maybe we can put an LED bulb inside so it's brighter. Look at that. Aha! It is green now. So we replaced it. We took this one out and we replaced it. It wasn't that hard because we have access through the glove box. And it also shows the volts. I checked it actually with my power supply on my bench and it shows exact so our battery is a little bit low we need to charge it because this battery is this is actually david's battery don't tell him it's from the trailer i also installed a led light here so now actually you can see that it comes on it's much brighter so that's soft as well so the only thing that doesn't work is this light and i'll figure this one too uh, yeah here one side is brighter than the other is this side the bulb all the way in 
Okay, this problem also solved. This bulb was just out of its uh, place. Okay, and I solved this problem as well. And I'll explain now. So, actually, I'm stupid. So this is my ignition light, right? And this is my brake warning light. That's when we have low pressure on one of the brake circuit and the PDWA uh, turns this light on. Now it is on because it comes on every time we turn the ignition on for test, right? Uh, and I'll show you how it's gonna come off when the engine starts. Well, I'm not gonna start the engine. We're gonna simulate that the engine starts. But here you see now we have oil pressure, which it's hard to see, but yeah, the oil pressure is on and the ignition light is on. And now it came on because we don't have alternator <laughs> and that's the problem because we don't have alternator, it doesn't see ground. But I connected it to ground here. So now every time we turn the ignition on, my ignition light comes on. But as soon as we start the car, now there's no ground there anymore. Now we have 12 volts and this light is gonna come off. Uh, about this light now, how it comes off? Well, it comes off when the oil pressure builds up. They are on the same circuit. So right now, because we have ground on this switch here, because the pressure is low, both lights are on. But as soon as we disconnect the ground from here, which means now we have high oil pressure or regular oil pressure, both lights come off. So this one is off and this one is off. But now even with a high oil pressure, if we connect this to ground, which I don't know if we're gonna be able to, but let's say we connect it because now it is not connected to ground. But if we connect it to ground somehow, yes. And now our brake light is on again. So now everything works as it should. All right, so we have the speedometer cable installed and we have the windshield wiper motor installed. And <laughs> this, by the way, is uh, how I'm solving this problem with the seal, remember? The seal on this flap is a little bit too tall and it doesn't allow the flap to close properly. I'm trying, probably I'm gonna end up taking it out and, I'm, and trimming it a little bit, but I'm trying because it needs just a little bit so has quite a bit of weight on top of it on top of a cardboard of course it's not directly on the paint so i'm gonna keep it like that for a few days hopefully it's gonna work but my point is about the windshield wiper motor it doesn't work <laughs> so let me show you where i'm standing with it and we're gonna go from there together so everything is plugged in there and we have these four wires here. Green is power. Now it doesn't have power, but if I turn the ignition on, now it should have power. Which it doesn't. Why? Apparently it popped my fuse. I plugged the switch on and nothing happened, so it looks like it popped my fuse. But what should happen is the switch should connect power to either the blue or the red wire. Blue with green and red with green and we have a brown with green. So when I put power to the blue or the red, 
the motor should work, but it doesn't. But I have a voltage drop. I'm at 4.8 volts here, so something is consuming my power. And to be honest, I can feel the wire getting hot. So something is going on there. So if I unplug it and plug in this other motor that I have here, it also came with Jones parts and I put it here. Is that safe? I think so. And I put power to the blue one. It works. Put power to the green, to the red one. It works. So my wiring is okay. The problem is in the motor. And that's too bad because this motor was the one that John cleaned perfectly. So I just painted it and installed it, but it didn't occur to me to test it. <laughs> So, I have to take it out again. Well, I took it out and I took it apart and somehow it works. I don't know why it wasn't working on the car. Oh, I guess it was jammed or something. I have no idea. So, the perpendicular one is the ground. So, if I put my ground there and my power to one or the other here on top, it works. So this is my first speed and this is my second speed. Now, don't get me wrong, even though the motor has two speeds from 1969 to 1972, the years that use this type of switch, they only use one of the speeds of the motor. I think they use the second speed, kind of. Actually, they also use the first speed, but they use it only to park. And how does that work? And why do we have so many contacts here? Well, so the two on the top are first and second speed. The two on the bottom are actually just a switch on off between the two of them. They are not connected to the motor at all. And this switch is controlled by this little pin here. And this little pin is controlled by this hump, whatever you want to call it here on the gear. So this switch is normally closed but when the hump hits it and presses it down that's when the switch disconnects so i want to test that so we're going to connect um how are we going to do that well what i'm going to do is i'm going to lower the voltage here to one volt and if we touch this here for a second that the amperage goes high, which means I have that short. <laughs> but if I press this pin in and touch, now it's disconnected. Okay. So you see where we're going with that, right? Okay. So that's what we have. We have ground, we have first speed, second speed, and then at the bottom we have a switch on off, on off. Let's go to the schematic and explain how that helps us so this is the plug on the motor like we said one is the ground the red and the blue are our speeds one has permanent power that comes directly from the fuse box and the brown with light green that's power when the little switch here is on and this is the switch the green is power so when the switch is on that closes the circuit here between the green and the blue with light green. So when this closes this circuit, it sends power to our second speed and the motor works on second speed. When we turn the switch off though, that disconnects the power from here, but it connects these two terminals. And when these two terminals are connected, and if this switch is still on inside the motor, the power goes back to the switch from the switch because these two pins are connected that sends power to our speed one and the motor continues working even though the switch is off until the hump on the gear hits this switch and disconnects it then we don't have any more power to our first speed we don't have power to second speed because this is disconnected and that's how the motor parks itself 
So it's pretty complicated. We send power from the motor back to the switch so we can send it back to the motor again. <laughs> it's funny though that this same diagram was used for the later cars. So that's for the later cars. So you see the configuration on the motor is exactly the same again. One speed, two speeds, permanent power to the motor and the little switch sends power back to the switch but the switch now has more positions here so in first position it sends power here in second position it sends power here so we have first and second speed and in the off position again it closes a switch inside here between one and two and that's how when the little switch on the motor is closed that sends power to number one here and number one sends power to number two and number two powers up our motor in first speed until this switch gets disconnected and then we don't have any more power on our first speed. So that's how it works. So I'm not sure why our motor didn't work but we're gonna assemble it again. We're gonna test it on the bench this time and we're gonna go from there. <laughs> Maybe the gear was jammed somehow. Let's see if it is gonna work now. Yes, it works. Well, then I'm gonna assemble it and we're gonna go test it again. but something was jamming it before because it was using my power and it blew my fuse maybe the wheel boxes but the wheel boxes spin absolutely no problem maybe my cover the effect of the cover you know many times when you fix stuff you test it as it is still partially disassembled and it works, you put the cover on and it doesn't work. That's called the effect of the cover. Still works. Okay, let's put it on the car then. All right, so the motor is installed again and let's see if it is gonna work. The fuse is still not replaced, so we shouldn't have power here right now. Yeah, it doesn't matter because we can jump it. So the blue one we said is the high speed. Yes, it works. Do you see it? Wait, I'm gonna do something. Now you should see it. There you go. That was the high speed, that's the low speed. Good and it stops as soon as we stop it. No. Now, let me change the fuse and then we're gonna check the wires here and see if everything is okay with them. Okay, we changed the fuse and now if we turn the ignition on, now we should have power on the green. Yes, okay. And if our switch on the motor is turned on, which means the motor is not in the park position, we should have power also on the brown with green, right? Which we do. So this power will disappear when the motor is in the park position. So the wiring so far is good. Let's install the switch. There you go. Oh. What? So that's off, that's on. Okay. Now though, in the off position, these two should be closed here. The switch should close them. And the motor should go park if we connect this now. There you go, it went. Ah. Is this off or on? Oh. That's on, that's off. So it should stop now. It doesn't. 
Why doesn't it stop? I don't understand. You know what? I think this switch might be bad or maybe this is not the right configuration. But I'm pretty sure this is the right configuration for this switch. In this position it closes 3 and 4. In this position it closes 1 and 2. But something is wrong. So give me a second. Okay. So we, sh we will act as a switch now. So like we said what the switch does is in the on position it connects power to second speed. In the off position, it connects power from the switch on the gear to first position. This means that if we connect these two, the blue and the green, like that, we are at the high speed. But as soon as we disconnect it, it stops anywhere. Because the switch in the off position connects these two, if we connect them, this means it should go park and stop. There you go, it stopped. Now I'm still holding it here, but it stopped. So let's try out again. We left it somewhere in the middle. We come here, we connect this, and it parked itself. So the wiring does what it's supposed to do. The switch is giving us troubles. So, you know what, let me go check how much a switch like this costs. I don't like this, this here anyways. So I'm gonna go see how much a switch like this costs and if it is not too expensive, we're gonna buy a new one. But if it's $162 like this one, well then we're gonna take this apart and see if we can fix it. <laughs> All right, so this is 29 over there. And if we scroll down to number 29, this is on the most motors website by the way so wiper switch clear hooters which is our switch here see here clear hooters unfortunately it's not available so they have a wiper switch with four terminals look which is lucas replacement for the clear original clear hooters but it says that the hole in the dash needs to be slightly enlarged and it has a chrome bezel and it costs $80. The chrome bezel though reminded me that we actually have a chrome bezel one that I discarded before because it has a chrome bezel, but actually we have one of these replacements here and it has four terminals in a little bit different configuration. And it actually looks like it uses both speeds. So let's see how that can help us. So it looks like the Lucas one has three position, which makes me think that actually they utilize both speeds, first, second, and also they have the park. Not sure how it connects though, but let's see. I'm just gonna connect the power to number two as before, which is, let's see where the power goes in all these situations. So. No power here, no power here, power here. In this position we have power. So that might be our slow speed. This is off, or one of them is off. Let's see in like this. No, that's off. So, so here we don't have anything. That's first speed and this should be second speed. There you go, that's second speed. So if that's first position, that's second position, that should be the park position. But let's see which one disconnects to. If we put the power just temporarily here in the off position, it connects to our first speed. In first position, in this position, and this position, there's nothing. Okay, so that's how we're gonna connect it. The power is gonna come here. Our first or slow speed is gonna come here. Okay, turn it off. Our second speed 
is going to come here and our park wire, our park power that comes from the motor connects here. So now that's how it should go. So now we have we should have first speed. There you go. Second speed, even better. Off. Perfect. Okay, but as it says on the Moss Motors website, the hole on the dash needs to become a little bit bigger because it's not gonna fit in this hole. You see they're different. And it has the chrome here, so I don't know if we can clean the chrome and make it black or we should keep the chrome. I don't know. I'll talk to John. Well, that was a complicated thing, but I'm glad I filmed it because now that I figured it out and I, and I filmed it, <laughs> I can always come back to this video and watch it and remember how everything works. So definitely this is a better option. The only problem is the chrome and, uh, and you know what? Chrome is chrome, who cares? I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. All right, so in the conclusion, just in a nutshell, let's explain one more time. The motor in the early TR6s, except TR250, the TR250 is one speed. Early TR6s have a two speed motor, but because of the way the switch is, only one of the speeds is uh, utilized. However, just by replacing the switch from this style to this style, $80, <laughs> you can utilize your second speed as well. Unless you have a TR250, which only has one speed anyway. All right, so with that, I think we should put an end to this video. It became a little bit too long, I guess, but when I start dealing with wiring, you know, it is like puzzles. I love chasing the gremlins in these old cars. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and supporting the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.